at uh, chapter 6.1 and to 6.4. All right. We'll look. Uh, so uh, a person falls, fall, pulls a 50 kilogram crate, 40 meters long, four by a constant force. Okay, so I'm going to sketch it before I start. Uh, the sketch I'm going to make, let's see, we got a box sitting on the floor. Uh, we'll put somebody's pulling a rope. Um, we've got an angle. Uh, we've got a friction pulling back on it. So we'll have a force of gravity pulling down and a tension force pulling up. And we want to determine the work done by each force. And the net work done. So our procedures here, our steps, what we're going to do. We're going to do an FBD. So number one, FBD. Number two, we're going to decide our coordinate system. So I'm going to make up positive and right positive. Uh, we're going to sit down and do our Newton's Laws, decide what's going on here. Uh, we're going to see the work done by specific forces. Then uh, we'll find the network by summing up all the work. Okay, so let's get started here and see what all we can do. So let's make an FBD of the box. So, so we got the force of the pull in the X direction, the force of gravity, the normal force, and we've got the force of friction. Now, I'm going to make myself a note here that um, on the force of the pull, that's going to be adjacent. So that's going to be cosine of 37 degrees. So I don't forget that. So whatever that force is, is going to be times cosine 37. So that was 100 newtons to begin with. So let's start setting up our, um, our forces and stuff. Okay. So actually we've got them set up already. So the force of friction equals 50 newtons. The force of the pull equals 100 newtons times cosine 37 degrees. Now we can start working with some stuff here. Okay. Uh, um, since it's not moving up or down, the work done by the normal force is zero newtons. I mean, zero joules. Oops, let me erase that. And we'll come back to that in a second here. Let me finish up what I was doing. My apologies. Okay. Now, we're going to talk about the work. So let's talk about the work with those two. So the work for the force of the push. It's going to be our force. Times my distance. It was given to me as 40 meters. So the work of the pull or push, or however you want to say it. That equaled... When I round it off, 3,200 joules. Now, I do the gravity. I mean friction. So I've got the work. Due to friction, and that equals 50 newtons times our 40. So my work due to friction is 2,000 joules. Now, according to our coordinate system that we set up, that should be a negative because it's going in the opposite direction. Now, what about up and down? 
the up and down, the only force applied that's causing the movement at a distance is the pull. So we don't have any we don't have any work done in the vertical direction. Okay? So the vertical direction, the up and down, the up and down doesn't have any work done. So when we start looking at this, when I look at my work net, the work done by the normal force plus the work done by gravity plus the work done by the push plus the work done by the friction, we have 0 plus 0 plus 3200 minus 2000. So my net work So my net work equals 1,200 joules. That's pretty straightforward. So let's look at our next problem. Now determine the work of hiker carrying. Must do to carry 15 gram pack up a hill. It's 10 meters high. Determine the work done by gravity and the net work. So let's take a look at the scenario. We've got a bank. The hikers want to walk up. It happens to be 10 meters high. Now, he's going to be walking up, walking up the hill. So, we've got to try to lay out the system here and see what's going on. Now, when we look at this, we've got to analyze what's going on when we talk about the work. We're raising a backpack from this point here from this point here and it's going up to this point here now that is our information so when we look at our backpack I've got the force carrying it up and the force of gravity pulling it down those are equal and opposite. So we want to focus in on going up. So we know the force of the backpack on our back has got to be equal to the force of gravity pulling it down. Now we've got something to work with. We know that the force, the force has got to be mass times gravity. So my work is going to be the force of me carrying the backpack up times the distance that I have to carry it up. So my work is going to be the equivalent of my the mass of the backpack times the gravity times the height of the heel. So that's going to be the mass of the backpack, which is 15, times gravity. I'm, just for easiness here, I'm going to make it 10 in a 10 meter high item. So, that work happens to be 1500 joules. That would be the work of me lifting it up. Now, what would be the work of gravity? Well, if I made that the positive direction and that the negative direction, it should be the exact same. So what's that going to make my network? My network is now going to be zero. So my net would be 1500 plus a negative 1500. How much network is required to accelerate a 1,000 kilogram car from 20 meters per second to 30 meters per second? First things first. 
work is change in kinetic energy. So my work is going to be one half kinetic energy initial. So I'm sorry, final minus one half kinetic energy initial. So kinetic energy. So my work equals one. Not one half. What a oh shaky darn. Let me retry this. My work is going to be one half m v final squared minus one half m v initial squared. That's what I meant to say. So my mass is one thousand. My velocity final is thirty. My velocity initial is 20. Now we're just going to the mass substitution. So W equals 1 half times 1,000 times 30 squared minus 1 half times 1,000 times 20 squared. So that's 500 times 900 minus 500 times 400. So W equals 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, minus 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, zeros. Hmm. One thing you got to remember about kinetic energy. The, it's not the mass that makes a big difference, it's velocity. When you change velocity, you really change kinetic energy. car traveling 60 kilometers an hour, it comes to a break and stop in 20 meters. If the car is going twice as fast, what is the stopping distance? Okay. Hmm. So... How are we going to approach that? Let me think a minute. i got to do a conversion. Okay. Now. Let's process through this. Let's see what we can consider. Alright. So. We know the work. We know the work equals force times distance. So. Whatever the the work here had to be equal to the one half times the mass times the velocity squared of the initial speed minus a oh, sorry final speed minus one half m v squared velocity initial. Now so we had this force and this distance. Well, if my velocity final is zero, okay, now force has mass times acceleration times distance. I have one half times the mass times the velocity squared. My masses cancel out. The velocity really doesn't make any difference. My acceleration doesn't make any difference because my acceleration is going to be the same. So that's gone. So my distance is going to be equivalent to wherever I square the velocity. Now, since I doubled my velocity, my distance is going to be equivalent to four times what it was originally. That one's a little complicated. We might have to come back and talk about more of those again. Alright, so a baseball with mass 145 grams. So let's fix that before we even start. So my mass equals 0 0.145 kilograms. 
traveling 32 meters a second, moves the fielder's glove back 25 centimeters, so the distance 0 0.25 meters. My velocity is 32 meters per second. What is the average force? So, work equals change in kinetic energy. So my work equals force times distance, which equals my one half m v squared minus one half m v squared. Now my velocity final is zero. My force, as we don't know, my distance is zero point two five meters equals negative one half my mass one four five my velocity. Now, you gotta sit down and work that out. Let me pause. Okay, so I got my force of 0 0.25, which equals negative 74.24. And so I divide. So my force is negative 297 newtons. Okay, so everything looks pretty good on that one. Let's see what we're going to look at next. All right, uh, a thousand kilogram roller coaster moves from point one to point two and point three. What is the gravitational potential energy at points two and three relative to one? Or y equals zero. Okay, so let's draw this picture here. All right, roller coaster. Okay, so point number one, point number two, point number three. Fill in some information. So, from here to here is 10 meters. And then between those two blotted lines, blotted lines, and dotted lines, it's 15 meters. Now, so, Potential energy, potential energy, before we even start, you got to remember, it's equal to mass times gravity times whatever the y distance is or the height. A lot of books just put h. Our textbook wants to use y, so I'm okay with that. Okay, now, it says, what is it, what is the gravitational at points 2 and 3 relative to 1? All right, now. So my potential energy at point two is going to be our mass, 1,000, and I'm going to use 10 again, and then it's times 10 meters. So my potential energy increases as I go in height, so that's just one, one, two zeros, one, two, three. So I got a lot of energy. And what's sweet is, is a little bit later, we're going to take this idea of energy and use it to compare. But now, relative to point number three, so potential energy at three, our height changes a little bit. We go down. So we still take our same thing, mgy, but we're going to do 1,000 times 10 times negative 15. So I get my potential energy at location three is 1, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4 joules negative, joules less. And if we talk about change in potential energy, okay, the change. Final minus initial. That's all we're looking at. 